since I was a young kid. I mean, I was wow. inspired by the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts. Uh, you know, I always wanted to fly, and I, I thought flying as an astronaut would kind of be the ultimate flight experience. Um, and I haven't been wrong. Suiting up before the flight here. In the grand narrative of space exploration, Charles Gemmer's name stands out not just for his achievements in orbit, but for his journey from humble beginnings to the stars. As a former astronaut with an illustrious career at NASA, Gemmer's experiences in the great beyond offer a glimpse into the challenges and triumph faced by those who dare to venture into space. Gemmer's spaceflight career is highlighted by three missions, STS-38 or Atlantis, STS-48 or Discovery, and STS-62 or Columbia, each making their own unique contributions to space exploration and research. So the, the job at NASA, at NASA is, you know, you're there for 12 years, you fly in space 24 days in my case, yeah. so there's a lot of time spent doing other things. So, you know, all the astronauts have other, you know, assignments. So I've done uh, software development, software testing. Uh, I was the engineering liaison officer to the Kennedy Space Center from the, as a representative of the astronaut office. I worked in the Mission Control Center as a capsule communicator, so that's, we always have an astronaut that, may, that does all the communication between the spacecraft and the ground. So I did that for about 11 flights. Uh, I even ran the uh, public appearance office uh, mm -hmm. where we coordinated astronaut appearances for a year. I, I did that work as well. So, yeah. you know, the, all of the jobs are, are kind of to support the manned space program. And then throughout those jobs, you're going to get pulled in and out of that to fly missions. 24 days, 5 hours and 38 minutes in space. What have you learned from the experience there? Well, well I learned a couple things. I, yeah. You know, I... I I learned that it's a lot harder to get there and work in than we thought, or really? than I thought for sure. Yeah. Uh, the access to space, you know, it, it's it's a lot more dangerous than we thought, um, you know, and um, and it's a lot more costly than we thought. Yeah. Now, th those are kind of the negatives. On the other side, uh, the positives is that, you know, w w with all the advances that we've made in space and space technology and miniaturization and all of the components that are necessary to get to space that help us every day here on the planet, that's been a great story, right? Yeah. I mean, computers that used to fill this room are now in your, in your Apple. Wow. <laughs> you know, your iPhone. Um, so so th those, are, those are great stories. You know, the satellites that we put up in space have told us much about our own planet and, and allows us to make informed decisions uh, about what we need to do to protect the place that we live every day and we come and work in every day. Uh, you know, we, we monitor crops, we monitor the oceans, we monitor pollution, we monitor ozone uh, content. We're, we have a complete data set now of the atmospheric chemistry and, and winds of the upper atmosphere. I mean, those are just a, a few examples of, of some of the benefits. Three missions in the space. Tell me more about your routine there. So you get up in the morning, you take care of your personal hygiene, meal preparation, housekeeping tasks. We still yeah. have to vacuum filters. We still have to clean. We still have to eat breakfast and eat a meal. Many and those jobs. Kind of, yeah, we have to do wastewater dumps. We have to do star alignments. We have to do state vector updates. I mean, we have to look through our, our test plan for the day and, and update that to make sure there's no changes. Uh, so those are just a few things. We're looking at weather across the world to make sure that we understand if we had to do an abort, we, we know which uh, airport we're going to use has a suitable weather for an abort, as an example. Same thing before we go to bed. We're going to do a number of those housekeeping tasks. We're going to do meal preparation. We're going to get ready for sleep. Uh, all of that stuff takes place in those three hours before or after sleep period. And then that 10 hours in the middle is really devoted to science. Wow. So what's your best memory, uh, what's your best moment in the space? Yeah, to have the best moment is just literally looking out the window, watching the world go ah. by. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you look back at the planet and you just, I mean, it's a magnificent view. It's, it's ever changing. You know, uh, uh, on my second flight, my hometown was always in darkness. The South Dakota, which is where I grew up in the middle yeah. of the States, was always in darkness. And on the, the last day of my second mission, 
we had to uh, delay one orbit because of weather. So on that last orbit, we actually, the South Dakota came into daylight, and uh, you know, in a daylight pass. And so I had the opportunity to look at all the places I grew up in, hung out in as a kid. And so that was a great memory. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the world is, is a beautiful place to, to look at from that vantage point. And at the same time, it's extremely humbling. I love to be there, to see the world yeah. from that point also. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's, it's very humbling, right? Yeah. Uh, to think that you're off the planet. So we have the best. But I don't want to say the worst. Maybe the scariest moment on, in, in, in this space. Uh, the scariest moment uh, for me actually uh, is, is actually not in space. Ah. The scariest moment is the night before. Ah, before you before go you into the space. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because you know, you're, you're faced with the reality of space flight and, and your own mortality, yeah. right? Because anything could happen out there on that launch pad. And so for, for most astronauts, that is, I think, the hardest, hardest time, right? Because yeah. you, you worry about your family. Uh, you know, your spouse, your kids, all, all, of the, all of the things that you don't want to leave, right? Yeah, your families and many, right. many burdens on Earth. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, the, you know, your family and friends, the, the, they have the most meaning in your life, and you, you, you want to come back to that, right? Kitty Pachin Sukjit, reporting for Thai PBS World.